Before I could react, Samara slowly turned to me. Her hideous. Uh, yeah. Hey! I don't care. I don't care. I peered at the picture. It was me as a child sitting on the porch of this very house. It is. I didn't realize my uncle still had this out. Okay. Also, great eye. <laughs> You've hardly changed. I was a child. You're still to me. What? what Nothing. What the f? Yo, what's good, boys? Welcome back to the Venice Boy, Drady Kid. And today, we are reacting to three true Halloween horror stories animated. Before previously, we watched uh, two short films, but they wasn't real. But this time, this is gonna be a real life horror story. Let's get it. Story Halloween one. Halloween night has always been just another date on the calendar. Halloween. I know you're getting that goddamn Halloween Wonder for me. Man. While people partied in ridiculous costumes, I was at my office, huddled over a dimly lit screen. Okay. Fixing code was my life. Chris, what's up with this dude's head, bro? Ain't nothing wrong with his head, it's the hair. It's the hot top. You know, I'm, I grew out of hot tops. And that night was no with hot tops no more. So, when Julian, my co-worker, called about a file crash, I didn't think twice before heading in to fix it. By the time I was done, it was close to 1.30 a.m. The streets were deathly quiet, while the moon was a merely cold, distant eye overhead. I was so damn tired that all I could think about was getting home, taking a long shower, and crashing into bed. Fifteen minutes, that's all it would have taken. The night air was heavy and still as I drove through the empty- Dang, he whipping that bit! Okay. Deep roads, totally normal. But as I passed an old, almost for there's no way, there's no way that's real life. I only see those kind of stuff in movies. No way he actually seen a number. Let me see. Let me, let me see hear him talk. Let me see hear him talk. Forgotten bus stop. I saw her, a girl standing alone under the flickering streetlight. She was dressed like Samara from The Ring, pale skin, dark hair hanging in wet clumps over her face. She couldn't have been older than 14, standing there all alone in the dead of night. I pulled over and rolled down the window. Hey, that's your problem. Hey, do it like me. Hey, you just gotta mind your business in life. I realized that 2024, you just gotta mind your business, bro. You'll live a whole lot longer if you just mind your business. You need a ride? I called out. She turned slowly, her face still hidden beneath the curtain what of hair. Is it? My bad. Right. I pulled over and rolled down the window. Yeah. Hey, you need a ride? I called out. You said she let a girl from the rings you act if she need a Yeah, you're tripping. She turned slowly, her face still hidden beneath the curtain of hair. For a moment, I hesitated. What if she took me for a creep and rang the cops? But what if? Now you're on one of the <laughs> three true Halloween horror stories now. And she nodded timidly. Th thanks. She slid into the passenger seat. Suddenly, a pungent odor like damp earth and something else. Something... Nah, if it was me, you had to sit next to me. You had to be in the passenger side. Because you behind me. I don't know what you got going on. I got to look at the goddamn mirror every second. I might crash because I'm going to be looking at you the whole time. You got to sit next to me. I ain't going to lie. Rotten filled the interior. I tried not to gag and blamed it on her overzealous Halloween costume. You really went for the look, didn't you? I giggled, trying oh, to lighten the mood. Night. Her skin was an eerie shade of gray, mottled and blotchy, as if she'd been underwater for far too long. The attention to detail was disturbing. It wasn't until we drove across the bridge that she spoke. It's not a costume. She whispered. I let out a nervous laugh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, let that nervous laugh out, bro. Let it out, bro. She's serious. It was not a costume. So, what's your name? That's even the first thing Samara. She replied. Even Samara, I catch it tomorrow, cause you ain't fuck. I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it, bro. Come on. Even though my eyes were glued on the road, I couldn't help the chill creeping down my spine. I cleared my throat. <clears throat> uh, aren't you a little old for trick or treating, Samara? She <laughs> laughed then, a low, rasping sound that made my skin crawl. I am. But Halloween is my favorite night. It's a shame my parents don't let me celebrate anymore. Why's that? 
I asked, regretting the question the moment it left my mouth. Well, they think I'm sick. I spend most days locked up in the attic. Her voice was barely a whisper, but the words clung to the air, heavy and suffocating. I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. That dude looks scared as free. Before I could react, Samara slowly turned to me. Her hideous. Oh, yeah. Hey! I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Like, she would have. Bro, we would have been fighting. If that happened, bro, we are fighting. We're fighting, bro. I don't care. I'm, a, I'm scared, bro. I'm scared of shit like that, but. This. This. Your face was Good only too, visible in the sun. Like a bloody nose. Some, somebody. Light. I knew and suffocating. I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. Got Before I could react, Samara slowly turned to me. Her hideous face was fully visible in the soft light. I noticed her skin first, peeling, hanging in ragged strips from her cheeks. It didn't look like makeup. Then, my eyes traveled down to her arms and the raw red flesh exposing beneath it. You wanna see a magic trick? Oh, hell no. Nah. She got bigger and shit. I don't know why she's kind of like a demonized big mouth character, like like a demonized one though. Like I don't know why. She asked, her lips curling into a smile that sent ice yeah. through my veins. Yeah. Before I could respond, she reached up and peeled a patch of skin from her face. It came off in one sickening tear, revealing more of that oozing crimson flesh. I had never slammed on the brakes like that before. What the hell is wrong with you? What the freak is wrong with her? I shouted, but she just laughed, started pulling at more patches of skin, ripping it from her neck, her arms, her scalp, everywhere. Blood dripped onto her lap, and the smell, oh god, the smell, thick and putrid, filled the air. I couldn't breathe, my vision blurred, my hands trembling as I fumbled for the door handle. The air was thick. Alright, alright, you're, now you're doing too much, bro. She's hurting herself, bro. Does make you feel that much of... Never mind, I wouldn't, I wouldn't understand. Because I'm not in that situation. If I was in that situation, I wouldn't even know how to ex explain. I don't even know how to act. So, I guess... Choking so. me. And that laughter. It wouldn't stop as I fumbled for the door handle. The air was thick. Choking me. And that laughter. It wouldn't Yo. stop. I threw myself out of the car, my feet stumbling as I broke into a run. I could hear my heart beating in my ears. I didn't look back. I couldn't. I don't know how long I ran, but eventually I found myself at a gas station. The harsh fluorescent lights felt like salvation. I staggered inside, breathless, as I tried explaining the incident to the clerk. In a second, the cops Yo. were informed. The officers arrived quickly, and when I explained what had happened, they exchanged looks that were to remain my nightmare for the rest of my life. They didn't think I was crazy, but their silence was almost verbal. They escorted me back to the car. I was still there. The end. Who the fuck is that? Is that their parents or something? Idling softly, but the passenger seat was empty. Uh. Instead, an older couple was standing by the side of the road. Their faces were contorted with worry. The what officer happened? spoke to them briefly before turning to me. Mr. Miller, this is Mr. and Mrs. Peterson, one of the cops said. They're is that the parents? Daughter Mary, she's been missing since last week. I stared at the couple, my mind struggling to connect the dots. Mary? She's... she's not well. Mrs. Peterson said, her voice trembling. She had a fever years ago. It's... It did something to her skin. The bullying at school broke her irreparably. Mary thinks she's Samara. You know that girl from the horror movie, The Ring? Who was drowned in a well for being weird and creepy. I felt the blood drain from my face. The girl, she wasn't some ghost. She was real. All of it. Everything she said, it was real. And it's even more twisted that she found similarities with the dead girl from the movie Ring. The cops asked where I'd last seen her, but I could barely get the words out. My mind kept flashing back to her peeling skin, her laughter. I mumbled something about the bus stop. Did they visit Viner? Yo, I gotta look up. I gotta look at what she looked like. 
girl. The ring. Oh, hell nah. Yo. Off, a cold dread settled in. What if they didn't find imagine. her in time? What if she hurt herself or someone else? Halloween is about masks and make-believe, but sometimes we can barely tell if it's a costume or... Did they find her? Yo, first of all, that was an amazing video. That was a great story. But I just want to know, did they find her? Did they find her? I hope they did, man. I hope all is well now. My heart skipped oh, a beat when I matched with Adam. His profile is about masks and make-believe. But sometimes, we can barely tell if it's a costume or... My heart skipped a beat when I matched with Adam. His profile showed a charming smile, dark hair, and a hint of mystery. He yep. His name Adam. Look at him. Just look at him. You just noticed something up with him. Mentioned he was new in town and looking to make connections. We hit it off immediately, sharing jokes and stories late into the night. By the way, I messaged. My uncle throws this incredible Halloween party every year. You should come. Adam replied. Sounds fun. I'll be the guy in the classic sailor costume. White uniform, navy accents, and a simple black mask. Can't wait to meet you in person. It seemed odd to me how he was already ready with a costume, but since... Yeah, he said that shit was easy. He didn't say, oh, really? You think so? And that nigga gave you the description what he's gonna wear, how he's gonna sound. Yeah, he's definitely weird. That guy weird. You should've... Don't hold none past nobody. Halloween was approaching, nobody. I didn't think okay, much of it. Is. The night of the party approaching, I didn't think much of it. I don't care who they is. Of it. The night of the party arrived in my uncle's old house. He was already ready with a costume, but since Halloween was approaching, I didn't think much of it. The night of the party arrived in my uncle's old house was alive with music and laughter. My uncle's place was always the highlight of the season, decked out in elaborate decorations that transformed it into a haunted mansion. Okay. I wore a flapper dress, complete with feathers and pearls, feeling like I'd stepped back into 1920s. As I mingled with friends, I spotted Adam across the room. Uh, the fuck. He like a polite robber. <laughs> You mean like a polite robber, like he like he gonna rob you the right way. <laughs> Sailor costume suited him perfectly, and the black mask added an air of intrigue. He approached with a confident smile. Julia, I presume. Guilty as charged. Oh, no nigga say presume, bro. Julia, I presume. Presume, spell presume, bro. I'm gonna actually caption you spell presume with a confident smile Julia I presume uh. guilty as charged glad you could make it we clicked uh, instantly never mind they got them they some the devil in me got damn characters and shit they like that he had a way of making I think feel she like exact, we were the she said that exact same freak. word he approached with a confident smile. She said that exact Julia, same I word. Presume. Hold on. Guilty as charged. Careful, you. My husband gets awfully cross with men who act fresh. Hmm. <laughs> he sounds like a ripe fellow. How's the marriage going? Lovely. Thanks for asking. Glad you could make it. We clicked instantly. He had a way of making me feel like we were the only two people in the crowded room. We danced to the upbeat music, and as we moved, he leaned in. You know, I could totally see you dressing up like a princess and dancing through these halls. I actually did that. Uncle's Halloween parties are always amazing. I couldn't see him. Else I would have introduced you. He smiled mysteriously. Well, yeah, I couldn't make his teeth green. I mean, white. Why his teeth had to be green? Like, you he seem even like someone who grew up with grand traditions. I giggled Brown. like a teen. <laughs> Later, as the party buzzed around us, he suggested we find a quieter spot. He led me to my uncle's old study, a room filled with antique furniture and family heirlooms. 
The scent of aged books and polished wood surrounded us. I hadn't been in there for years. Adam picked up a vintage photograph from the mantelpiece. Is this you? I peered at the picture. It was me as a child sitting on the porch of this very house. It is. I didn't realize my uncle still had this out. Also, great eye. (laughs) You've hardly changed. I was a child. You're still to me. What? What Nothing. What the fuck? You're still to me. You're... (laughs) Yo, tripping? Am I tripping? Am I tripping? That's... Red flare right there, bit. Hang on, cap. He nodded, his eyes unreadable behind the mask, hiding a pretty face which I was craving to see. He locked his eyes with me, put a hand on my back, and pulled me in, leaning to give a kiss. I moved back and decided to change the subject. I should probably get back to my friends. As we rejoined the party, I reached for my phone to check the time, but it was missing from my purse. That's odd. I murmured. Everything okay? My phone's gone. I must have left it somewhere. He reached into his pocket and handed it to me. Found this on your uncle's table. I took it slowly. Oh, thanks. Never realized I took it out. But doubt lingered. I excused myself. Maybe I just need something to drink. Adam handed me a glass from a nearby table, not letting me go. Yeah, this nigga different. He weird. Bro, he, she's saying she needs to get away from you for a quick second and think about what the fuck is going on, bro. Like I said, bro, I knew it. This dude is a polite robber. Didn't I say that when I first seen him? Bro, he's a polite robber, bro. He's going to give it back if you ask for it. I know it, but I just see him. You can just tell. You can just tell, bro. Here, try this. I said it. I hesitated. I see what is like it? Handed me a glass from a nearby table, not letting me go. Here, try this. I hesitated. What is it? Just punch. Promise it'll make you feel better. I sipped cautiously. The room felt warmer, the lights a bit too bright. Adam stayed close, his hands lightly touching my elbows. You seem tense. I'm fine. I insisted. Why the fuck you took that drink? I ain't gonna lie, you, you, that's different. Even though I wasn't that's sure. Your, it's your fault. That's your fault for real. Like, you see the red, brrr, red flags and shit, and you still took that drink. Also, As the evening problems. wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. His voice, his mannerisms, they all seemed strangely familiar. I tried to recall if we'd met before, but my thoughts were muddled. Needing a moment alone, I slipped away to find the bathroom. On my way, I noticed a door ajar leading into a small storage room. Drawn by curiosity, I stepped inside. Stacked on shelves were boxes labeled with family names. One box in particular caught my eye. It had my mother's name on it. I opened it to find old photographs and letters. Among them was a picture that made my blood run cold. It was my uncle at a past Halloween party, wearing the exact sailor costume Adam had on. Ew, what the freak? The white uniform, navy accents, and black mask. I stumbled back, memories flooding in. The way Adam knew about my childhood, the familiar gestures, his presence in the study surrounded by family mementos. Heart pounding, I rushed back to the party. I searched the crowd frantically but couldn't find him. Spotting my parents, I hurried over. Mom, Dad, I need to talk to you. They looked concerned. What is it, honey? I told them everything. Their faces paled. My father clenched his jaw. Are you sure? I know. Yes! I think she is, bro. I think she's pretty sure, bro. Freak! He knew things. Personal things. And the costume. It's his. Without another word, my father went to call the police while my mother stayed by my side. Minutes later, officers arrived, discreetly making their way through the guests. They found my uncle in the garage doing drugs and escorted him out, his mask removed to reveal a smug expression. As he passed me, he gave a sly smile. I just wanted to dance with you, Julia, baby. I'll return for that kiss. A chill settled over me. My mother hugged me tightly. 
The realization that someone I trusted had crossed such a line left me feeling exposed and vulnerable. In the days that followed, I tried to make sense of it all. How long had he been watching me? Why would he do this? One thing was certain. The masks people wear aren't always part of a costume. Sometimes, they're there to hide the darkest intentions. That one was deep. Yo, that one was deep. We on the third one now, though, man. Let's get it. Ain't no way this can, bro. Ah, this shit crazy. I don't know. Life is crazy. Life is just crazy. I always oh, loved shit. Halloween. The costumes, the escape, the darkest intentions. I always loved Halloween. The costumes, the escape from reality, the thrill of being someone else for a night. So when my friend Alyssa invited me to an exclusive pirate-themed Halloween party on a private Hawaiian island, I couldn't resist. I just got a question. Why her like teeth straight like that, and you you got like a little? Cause you got a gap. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the gap community. Just saying. It kind of looks. Like it was hosted by a wealthy entrepreneur she knew through her job at a luxury travel agency. We arrived at the island just before sunset. The sky was pink, casting a magical glow over the palm trees and pristine beach. A grand ship replica was anchored near the shore, serving as a backdrop for the festivities. Lanterns hung from the trees, and the sound of waves mingled with the distant music. This is incredible. My costume, a slutty pirate captain with a crimson coat and knee-high boots, matched Alyssa's ensemble. As we made our way to the main area, I noticed guests arriving in elaborate costumes, some more authentic than others. The attention to detail was impressive. Hey, that view is beautiful though. Like, let's just admire the view for three seconds. Gonna get to the view. Impressive. Servers dressed as deckhands offered exotic drinks, and the atmosphere buzzed. The fuck is them thing though? Ah, uh, them niggas passing them up. Bro, what's up with people dressed like this? Come on! With excitement, we were all given a glowing jelly like sweet. We joined the crowd, mingling and enjoying. Yet, despite the lively scene, I felt a slight unease. Perhaps it was the way the stuff seemed overly attentive, their eyes lingering a bit too long, or the subtle way security personnel were stationed at every exit. Did you notice the security here? I asked Alyssa. It's a high profile event with wealthy guests. Makes sense they'd be cautious. I nodded, trying to shake off the feeling. We continued to enjoy the party, dancing and laughing under the starlit hey, sky. Nice. Later in the evening, I decided to step away to get some fresh air. Walking toward the quieter side of the beach, I spotted a small group of guests talking in hushed tones. I heard they're planning to move them tonight. Are you sure? The schedule was for tomorrow. Change of plans. The boss doesn't want any delays. I frowned, unsure of what I was hearing. Emma? A voice behind me nearly made me jump out of my skin. I turned to see a man dressed as a ship's officer, his expression unreadable. The main event is about to start. You're invited to join us, he said, his tone polite but firm. Uh, sure. He guided me back to the main area, where Alyssa was waiting. There you are. They're about to start the treasure hunt. Oh. We were handed old-fashioned maps and split into teams. Okay. The objective was to find hidden clues leading to a grand prize. It seemed like fun, but the conversation I'd overheard nagged at me. As our group ventured into the dense foliage, the path became less defined. Does this seem... off to you? I whispered to Alyssa. You're overthinking. Uh, it's, it's that movie shit, bruh. It's that movie shit. It's part of the adventure. We reached a clearing where an old chest sat under a large tree. One of the team members eagerly opened it, revealing a note inside of treasure. Return to the ship for the final challenge, it read. Confused, we began to make our way back, but the path we'd taken was no longer there. The trees seemed denser, the way obscured. That's odd. I could have sworn we came this way. Our phones had no signal. 
Suddenly, someone shouted. We turned to see figures emerging from the trees, dressed not in costumes, but in plain black attire, faces obscured by masks. Uh, run! I hope that's Before we could react, the masked figures surrounded us. One stepped forward. Please remain calm. We require your cooperation. Who are you? What do you want? Your families have resources. They'll pay handsomely for your safe return. Kidnapping. The word hit me like a blow. This was a setup. Alyssa grabbed my hand. We bolted into the jungle. The sound of footsteps pursuing us. Adrenaline surged as we dodged trees and left over roof. I hope y'all running like you saying, because if y'all don't, y'all gonna get scrubbed like a boat. I ain't gonna flex. Y'all gonna get scrubbed like a boat. <sighs> Damn, man. I spotted a narrow path leading toward the beach. We burst through the foliage oh, onto gone. the sand, they the ocean stretching out before us. In the distance, the replica ship loomed. An idea sparked. The ship? They might have a radio or something we can use to call for help. We sprinted toward it, climbing the gangplank as quickly as our shaking legs allowed. The deck was eerily quiet, devoid of the earlier merriment. Check the captain's quarters. Alyssa urged. We found the room and frantically searched for any communication equipment. Instead, we discovered files containing information about us, photos, background details, family connections. They've been planning this. Alyssa whispered, terror in her eyes. Footsteps echoed on the deck outside. We hid behind a large cabinet as the door creaked open. Men entered and ransacked the room. That is when I noticed a flare gun mounted on the wall. I pointed to it, and Alyssa nodded. Carefully, I reached for it, praying the shadows concealed our movement. Just as one of the men approached, I stood up and fired the flare at him. He stumbled backward into his accomplices. Run! Oh, this is real life. Yo, this is we so... We dashed out of the room, chaos erupting behind us. On deck, other guests were being herded together, confusion and fear evident on their faces. I fired another flare into the air in order to distract them. Alyssa pointed to a lifeboat. We hurried to lower it, but the mechanism was slow. The kidnappers were closing in. With a final push, the lifeboat hit the water. We jumped in and began rowing with all our strength. After a while, we spotted a Coast Guard vessel responding to the flare. Relief washed over me as the kidnappers retreated. Hours later, we woke up in a hospital, but our world had changed. They told us that we were rescued by fishermen, that the replica was an old shipwreck that belonged to pirates in the 17th Yo. century. There was evidence of a small private party at the island, but when the authorities investigated, they didn't find anyone else there. They also found a high quantity of drugs in our system, and I suspected it had to do with the glowing jelly that we were offered. We never understood how much of it was real or how much we had hallucinated. But the fact remained that none of the other guests were ever seen again. It kind of sounded unreal, but it was real. All these stories are crazy. I ain't got no story like that because I, I play stuff smart. I ain't gonna lie. I never had a story like that. That's crazy. I ain't gonna lie. But all right, yeah, boys. Let's see what that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below. I'm going go. I'm going. Tell me if y'all like videos like that. You feel me? Oh, shit. Click the video if you ain't. If you ain't see the other scary short film, it's not real. But it's still scary. Right there. Click it. Happy New Year's.